question from ocean current says always going to be news it's always going to be vogue it is always going to be found it's always going to be asked and the question that can be as conventional as this one like explain the currents of north atlantic ocean and their significant role in the climate of western europe is a, a link between oceanography and a climatology why is it that such type of questions are going to be asked they are always going to be asked because they are conventional they, this is like they because uh, this is one question uh, where some type of interrelationship can always be established uh, and that's the basic reason that uh, the question was asked the scope is that because you are going to be talking about good number of ocean currents uh, let's say some 10 or 11 different names uh, so everything will going to be having its own value as far as marx is concerned so it's going to be marks switching that's number one second is uh, since you are going to be having a core relationship with the climatic condition and if you are able to name all the climatic condition then again we're going to make it marks switching the third is that since you are going to be drawing a diagram in this case a map in this case uh, showing that uh, all of these ocean currents uh, that will again going to make that it is going to be very very significant in this case uh. so the topic is going to be very, very marks fetching in this case. The approach that you have to take in this case is you have to be organized in your thinking. And only when you are organized, you will be able to structure it, you will be able to correlate it as well. And this structure and correlationship is significant because the topic is going to be all about correlationship with of one ocean current with its climatic condition. Now, the ocean currents go on to begin from. We can go to pick up the topic and from where exactly is it that it can go to begin from. There is that part of the current that enters the Gulf of Mexico. We are going to be talking about that part of the current that enters the Gulf of Mexico. That is what we are talking about in this case. This part of the current that enters the Gulf of Mexico comes from the Florida Strait. That's the strait from where it comes here. And joins the Antilles current. These are the Antilles current with which it goes on to join. This combined current moves along the southeastern coast of United States as Florida current up to Cape Hatteras. And then there are from Cape Hatteras onwards, from here onwards, from the Cape Hatteras up to the Grand Banks of Newfoundland, it is going to be called by the name of Gulf Stream. From the Grand Banks, the Gulf Stream is deflected eastward. From these Grand Banks, it is going to be deflected eastward. That's the way. Under the confined influence of the westerlies and the rotation of the earth, then it crosses the Atlantic Ocean as North Atlantic Drift. So, all in all, it goes into the whole of this is going to be called by the name of North Atlantic Drift. The North Atlantic Drift bifurcates into two branches on reaching here, the eastern part of the ocean. That is, after having it reached in this place, this is the place where it has reached in this region. And then it goes on to get itself bifurcated into two branches. The northern branch is going to be called by the name of a North Atlantic Drift. It reaches the British Islands eh, from, from where it can go on to move along to the coast of Norway. That is, that's the place from British Islands it can go on to reach these regions. I mean, all of these regions, that's how exactly that it goes on to move. And the southern branch flows between Spain and Azores. This is the southern branch that goes on to move between Spain and Azores and it goes on to be called by the name of Cold Canaries Current. The Canaries Current finally joins the North Equatorial Current, that is, this Canary Current finally joins the North Equatorial Current in this manner and completes the Gaia. This is what we are going to be calling it by the name of Gaia. That is if you can go to observe this part, this is what we are going to be calling it by the name of Gaia. With this one being called as the western boundary current, the eastern boundary current, the northern branch and the southern branch of it. That is how the Gaia is going to be completed in this case. That's the significance of, that's the significance of it. Now, picking up another example of it that we have talked about in this case, yeah. there is a from this region, from from the Grand Banks here. This is the place it is going to be deflected under the combined influence, and of course it goes on to move in this manner. And 
uh, the whole of this region goes on to be forming itself in the form of this type of a gyre. And this gyre is, keeps on moving here from one after other to the other one. Now the North Atlantic drift goes on to get itself bifurcated as we have again talked about it. And this is the place it goes on to get itself bifurcated here. In this manner, of course, one goes on to go towards the other side of it. And then that goes on to make its complete circle and cycle of it. That is where we are going to be calling it by the name of Azores current and Canary current. Canary current is going to be a cool current. This is largely because it goes on to get affected by upwelling in this case. So having talked about it, how is it that the whole of the ocean current can go on to uh, affect the climate of uh, climate of Western Europe? That's the question. Currents of North Atlantic, not South Atlantic, North Atlantic, only North Atlantic. That means uh, the question is going to be focusing on what? Focusing on North Atlantic, that is North Atlantic drift or Gulf stream. That's one. And the second is that it's explain, it's not discuss. That means you have to simplify it. You have to write words say, in such a manner that it goes on to become very, very, very simplified. So it's not talking about a compact language in this case at all. Now the whole thing can be explained in terms of certain cardinal features. One of them is going to be temperature. The effect on temperature. Now North Atlantic drift is going to be one of these currents that is going to be warm. That means uh, the whole of uh, this region goes on to have a higher temperature than normal. And how high it is going to be? Imagine at this level, this is going to be Siberia. How cold Siberia can go to be? But the region is going to be habitable only because of this place, only because of this region. And the reason is the currents are warm. Let's take a second example. You will going to find a, a port in this region. That's where you're going to find a port, and the name of this port is going to be called by Murmansk. That's the name of the port, Murmansk. Now, Murmansk remains ice free for the whole of the year only because of the effect of the currents in this case. The third part is uh, there is a when it is going to be not so warm, it is, of course, it leaves the shores of North America. So it is not going to be having a major influence in North America at all. It is going to be having a major influence only in Western Europe. That is with respect to temperature. The second effect is going to be with respect to that of winds. That is uh, winds and pressure conditions. Now these currents are going to be warmer. And uh, when these currents are going to be warmer, they, they are the ones that go on to aid. They are responsible for aiding the formation of a low pressure all around Iceland. That's called as, sometimes going to be called as Icelandic low and sometimes called as Icelandic high. They follow the winds and how is it that the winds are being followed? This is the way that the winds are going to be followed in this case. So winds go on to follow that part and winds are the ones that are responsible for it. Now, it is these winds which are going to be warmer. They are able to find their way deep in, into Western Europe. And that is what is responsible for, for the creation of the warmer condition. Now, European condition is going to be very different from the rest of it. Let's say from North America, because in Europe, the mountains are going to be small and they are going to be arranged in such a manner. This is the way that the mountains are going to be arranged. Consequently, the wind is able to move inland. Had it been that the mountains would have been running parallel to the coast, then the winds would have not been able to reach so deep inside that of Western Europe. So that is going to be condition of winds. The third is the pressure condition that we talk about. Warmer current is generally going to be associated with a low pressure condition. Of course, that goes on to get itself aided by some factors like that of jet stream as well, upper air circulation as well, where the pressure goes on to become high or the pressure goes on to become low. But then the pressure conditions in this region are generally going to be low, aided by warmer water body. The fourth is humidity and precipitation. The amount of humidity that the region carries, the whole of this region carries, 
that is going to be relatively very very high and that's largely because the temperature of the air is high as the temperature of the air is high the amount of evaporation that it can going to cause on the water surface is going to be high and as evaporation is going to be high it will be able to release a good amount of water vapor back into the atmosphere and which is responsible for increasing the humidity level of the region humidity level is going to be good in this case here and uh, as you can go to understand it correlated here this was the basic reason of uh, why and how cotton textile industry of uh, of britain uh, was developed in the region because under humid conditions the it couldn't go on to break at all the other aspect of surface humidity is precipitation the amount of precipitation that takes place in all of these regions in the whole of western europe is generally going to be low low in comparison to its latitude and position low in comparison to that of its counterpart counterpart means british columbia counterpart means uh, means new zealand and why it is so the basic reason in this case is that because the mountains they don't go on to run parallel they move laterally in this map consequently the humid winds are able to intrude deeper into the region so it has its effect the effect is that the humid conditions here or the precipitation conditions here they are going to get themselves confined only to the coastal regions rather they are able to intrude deep into it the last part that is a cyclonic disturbance the whole of this region does get affected by cyclonic disturbance so particularly what we going to be calling it as temperate cyclones fronts and uh, depressions uh, and uh, it is this amount of water which is responsible for leading to a very high amount of moisture content in the region uh, and uh, warmer the water body higher is a uh, evaporation higher is the evaporation higher is the amount of moisture content uh, and uh, that goes on to be responsible for uh, a high amount of precipitation climate of a western europe can be explained in these five points temperature winds pressure conditions humidity precipitation and cyclonic disturbance to have more such discussions and analysis subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for notifications on our upcoming videos